Hello, and welcome to Art Block, the show where we talk about art and how it's made. I'm your host, Spirit, and today on this special episode of Art Block, I decided to get a little help from you guys. Today's topic is some of the varying levels of artistic skill and how you can improve. And in order to make this episode work, I sent out a journal on DeviantArt asking for some of my followers to send in an example of their best artwork, and today we'll be breaking down the artwork down into a few different categories. Let's start at the novice level. This is the part where you're either just dipping your toe into drawing, or you're still learning some of the basic techniques such as coloring and line work. At this stage, I've noticed that a lot of artists will generally draw without using construction lines and just press really hard on the paper. This can lead to some proportion problems, inconsistencies such as one side being way different from the other, or the picture will look flat or blocky depending on the situation. At this point, there's also a lot of inconsistencies with coloring, especially in traditional art. If you take a look at this picture by Triforce Treasure, you can see that the strokes of the colored pencils tend to go in a lot of different directions, which can make the picture seem a bit scribbly or unorganized. Compare that to an amateur level piece of art by Graceful Art, and you can see the difference between the two. Another thing you'll see in a novice level piece of art is an overall lack of consistency or shakiness of the line work and shading. If you take a look at this piece by FNAF Doolin, you can see that the shading of the piece and the line work have a lot of variations in thickness and seem to be all on one layer. Now, an easy way to fix this would be to simply have the shading on a layer behind the line art. However, if you're working with something like MS Paint, then you're going to have a little bit more trouble and might need to spend some extra time on each piece. Overall, the three areas that need the most work at the novice level are anatomy, coloring, and line control. In order to improve anatomy, I would suggest looking up references to whatever you're drawing and try to include construction lines to help bring a little extra consistency to the shape of the character. Coloring is mostly something that has to be improved with practice. If you're working with something like colored pencils, then I would suggest using lighter strokes and then layering the strokes while moving the pencil back and forth in the same direction. Lastly, with line control, if you're just learning how to use a tablet, I would suggest making quick strokes on the tablet in the direction that you're trying to get the line art to go. Or if you're lucky and happen to use Paint Tool Sci or Fire Alpaca, then I would suggest trying out the Line Stabilizer tool. Just don't become dependent on it. The novice level is actually a beautiful stage to be at with your art because while you might spend a lot of time on one piece, you're getting better and better with each piece you make, and before you know it, you'll be at the next level. Speaking of which, let's talk about the amateur level. At the amateur level of art, you really want to start getting a feel of your style as well as any program you're working in. You don't know everything per se, but you have practiced quite a bit and you're slowly getting a hang of anatomy and technique. At this stage in particular, your artwork not only gets a lot cleaner, but you also start to get a real feel of where everything starts falling into place. At this stage, you also start getting a feeling for shading and how it works. When you're at an amateur level, it's time to start keeping in mind not only how dimension works, but also color mixture and how color theory comes into play with your characters. For example, Heartsy Artsy's piece is a fairly good shape and consistency with the character, However, the character stands out a lot from the background. The piece has what I can only guess is a vibrant green grass against a contrasting red, yellow, and blue sky. At this stage, I've noticed a lot of colors in more complicated pieces tend to be very contrasting and don't tend to look quite right when it comes to making artwork. A way to correct this is to search up examples of what your color scheme is going to look like and reference from nature. Not only that, but there tends to be a bit of an inconsistency at this stage of experience when it comes to placement in the foreground and the background, such as the wings both being on the same side despite wings not really working like that. Another thing you're going to want to start looking into as an amateur artist is composition. Composition is essentially the placement of objects or characters in an art piece, and is usually involved in the planning of an art piece. At this stage, a lot of artists will usually have a rough idea of what they want to draw and just start going at it. However, not all of them quite have the amount of planning put into the final piece from what I've observed. This can be fixed by sketching up some thumbnail sketches beforehand to get the placement and overall idea of where everything's supposed to be, or if you're working with digital art, you can probably fix a lot of the problem with some major cropping or removing of the characters. I will give you a fair warning though, make sure to always work at double your final document size or else cropping it down might end up making your art too pixelated when it comes to the final product. One big difference between the amateur and expert artist is the use of your medium when it comes to shading. Now don't get me wrong, airbrushing when done right is a really nice way to create a soft shading on a picture, but I've noticed that a lot of amateur artists will tend to go a bit overboard with airbrush shading. One example is Buttons art here. While the shading on the body is overall pretty good and gives some dimension to the character, the white patches on the hair and the eyes are just a little too bright and make the hair look like plastic. An easy way to fix this is to go into your layer-based program and to take the layer that you have the shading on and reduce the opacity. Moving up, we're now at the expert level. At this level, you're going to want to start asking yourself whether you consider your art worthy of selling, and if so, consider any qualities that may be improved upon before making your artwork available to sell in general. 
Two of the more notable pieces I got that I would include in this level are V-Chart and Pristine's piece. Both have some very minor flaws, but they aren't too notable compared to an amateur piece. At this point, if you've been doing primarily stylistic works, this would be a good time to start doing life studies in order to understand more realistic proportions and anatomy. One thing that is a good step up from an amateur level piece of art is texture and lighting placement. At this point, you should already have a general good feel of how cast and form shadows work, and at this point, you'll usually have a good idea of how to blend and use more painterly strokes. And most artists at this point also have a good feel of their program or their selective medium. Pristine's chalk pastel piece is a good example of how texture can give a piece of art character. Even if you're not going all out with your detail, Crunchy the Cat's piece is also a good mix of detail and simplicity. On the opposite side of that spectrum, we have EAGC 7s are of Luna from The Loud House and Yoshi. The reason why this is above an amateur piece of art is because while the style is quite toony and doesn't really have any form of texture or shading, there's obvious intent behind each of the shapes and various angles. In this case, the artist has managed to not only copy a show's style pretty accurately while also translating another character to said style. An expert artist isn't necessarily the best at everything. Even a master level artist has room for improvement. The thing that usually differs an expert artist from a master artist is usually small things like inconsistencies with anatomy, minor fundamental things such as a small problem with shading or maybe a stray stroke, and the occasional composition problem. Usually at this point, you'll have drawn for such a long time that you'll usually get into a rhythm, and whenever you discover someone else's artwork that you want to emulate, you usually see how you can improve or at least want to change. Anatomy and fundamentals are always a good thing to practice, and as you draw, over time you'll realize that things that you want to change sometimes require you to relearn something that you may already know and try it from a new angle. To take a quick side stop here, I want to discuss art college and your overall level of skill because I know there's going to be that one guy who's probably thinking about it. If you're planning on going to a prestigious art school like Ringling, CalArts, or Pratt, or any other renowned school, you'll need to get your art up to at least an expert level of skill before applying, as well as doing some extensive research on human anatomy and studying from life. Now, if you're planning on going somewhere that's a little bit more accessible or just a community college, then novice and amateur artists can probably get in without too many problems, though I would highly suggest taking some art classes if you're not too experienced with the various art mediums. Alright then, we're at the master level now. At this point, you basically reached the level of skill where there isn't too much to be improved upon. For example, Fire Red Ender's piece has a very obvious flow to it, and despite the piece being a lot more cartoony, the changes from a more realistic look are pretty deliberate. The cell shading, despite appearing to only be one color with a reduced opacity, still makes the piece feel dimensional as if it had depth to it. I've noticed a lot of cases where cell shading can be a little too clean or shiny when people add too many levels of detail, so seeing someone get it right is always nice to see. Another great example here is Dog Eye Crimson. The texture on the pony's coat not only gives it dimension, but helps it stand out from the background just enough. The key to incorporating textured strokes is to make sure that both the background and the foreground have just enough texture to seem tangible, however, at the same time making sure to draw the eye to the right part of the piece, which in this case is the pony in the foreground. At the master level, you'll generally see very few mistakes in terms of anatomy or construction. The one exception to this rule is Sakura Fly's piece, as you can see there's a little bit of an issue with anatomy and symmetry, but the way that the line work and coloring are executed are of someone who definitely knows what they are doing. What makes a master level artist is someone who either has practiced or studied enough to have a strong sense of what they are drawing and how their technique is incorporated into the feeling of the picture. Similarly to an expert artist, the only way that I could suggest you improve upon your artwork is to see what other people of a similar skill level are doing and see where you want to change your art. In cases where there are minor errors, more often anatomy or composition techniques, practicing doing rough sketches over construction lines is a great way to not only get a better feel for the anatomy, but also provides a way to get a more polished version of a thumbnail sketch. Oh boy, that episode took a lot longer than expected. Big thank you to everyone who was kind enough to send in your artwork. This episode wouldn't have been able to exist without your help. If anyone is interested in checking out these noble artists, I've left a link to a journal in the description where you can see all the artists, and if you have time, be sure to check out their art and give them a watch. If you liked what you saw and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe and share this video around. It supports me and is practically free. Also be sure to check me out on Twitter and DeviantArt where I post art and hang out with you guys outside of the show. Want to help out behind the scenes? Check me out on Patreon where you guys can get access to resources and other cool stuff for as little as $1 a month. Thank you all for watching, I'm Spirit, and I'll see you next time.